This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And this week, we did our best to break Jonathan's brain for April Fool's Day, and with some very special cursed guns from hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades. This is a horrible negative space between the barrel and the, and the frame of the Glock. It's, oh, it makes me almost physically sick. You, it, this is bad, and you should feel bad. Let us know what other games or guns you'd like to see Jonathan break down, and make sure to subscribe for more of this kind of content on the channel, including our show Loadout, which takes an in-depth look at some of the most iconic firearms in gaming. Right, happy April Fool's Day, Jonathan. Well, that's, uh, that's a bit disturbing. Um, <laughs> one of these, sort of a super truncated barrel and a truncated receiver as well and in a, a, a very low power cartridge so you could design a, a tiny tiny uzi this is the micro uzi i'm sure you, some of you know but it's in nine millimeter i'm slightly confused by the magazine design as well as to why it needs to be so broad in the base and then narrowing to the overall length of the 25 acp i think it was cartridge uh, I might be missing something there. My my brain is already slightly fried by that crazy gun. I think um, Ian from Forgotten Weapons would probably call that an, uh, an swarm of angry bees. So this is a scaled down Mosin. Now there are reduced scale rifles of all sorts. There's also a, a really quite fascinating historical precedent for this. I think the idea was to encourage, um, I guess, warlike offspring. <laughs> and so you do see these perfectly beautifully made by the same people, usually. Scale, late 19th century rifle. But it's kind of weird, because until you're holding them, you don't appreciate how small they are. This is a, essentially a child-sized rifle. Oh, no. That's it. Okay. Right. Well, heresy. More MP5 heresy. Clutch this what this real on tight as I uh, process the pump action MP5. Now, uh, this is going to cause, I suspect this is going to precipitate some comments of a certain nature, regardless of what I say about it. So, on the one hand, it's quite clever. There's no reason why it wouldn't work. And if you're going to do it, you probably want to make a pump grip out of the handguard from the MP5 SD. I don't know, uh, maybe a cut down. I, God, I can't believe I'm thinking about how to do this, but probably the MP5K vertical foregrip handguard would make the most sense for a pump action MP5. I don't know. Just not the same, is it? Yeah, definitely, definitely cursed design there, but I have been shown <laughs> the inspiration for this one. Pretty, pretty closely modeled after a real craft produced firearm. Uh, and the game does a good job of modeling it as it does with all of its guns, actually. The, the finish, uh, a lot of these improvised designs, well, sorry, craft produced designs, not technically improvised. They do not typically get the privilege of a finish. <laughs> <laughs> so the bare metal tends to rust, and we see that here with the uh, slightly disgusting sheen of uh, corrosion. Not a happy design, but needs must, uh, I guess. <laughs> Pause it there. Yes, unfortunately, I know exactly what this is. Um, killing, killing them softly, I think was the title. Dreadful film, I thought, but that's that's a subjective opinion on the on the movie itself. Quite a quite an interesting plot point in terms of the stupidly cut down sawn off shotgun that is replicated here, with the front of the cartridge cases sticking out of the the cut down, incredibly cut down barrels. I was laughing already because I've seen like try and as I think you can do in um, H3 VR barrels on a shotgun you can flick it shut as you can with a real one. Well, the shorter the barrel gets, the less mass there is up front, and you can't do that. And certainly with one this short, you can't do it. So we saw the table used as leverage to actually close the 
the breach. So let's see what it does. There's excessive spread, which you, you would get. Point being, the uh, lethality is definitely reduced because the velocity of these pellets is, is way, way low. Not an effective weapon. Uh, very funny to see it in, in use in the game, especially with the, the running <laughs> animation. If there weren't a force from, from these rounds to blow locks off a door, then it would be a highly convenient breaching shotgun being so tiny, but not great. Not very safe, because although it's less, less than uh, lethal as you would wish, it's lethal enough to blow your fingers off, so um, not very safe, not a good idea. Don't do it. What the heck is that? What? <laughs> this thing is completely insane. I mean, do I need to say anything about this? Obviously not a good idea. It wouldn't work because there isn't enough support for the cartridge case. So the cartridge case is going to burst and or shoot out the back. There isn't even any room to install the round in the in the sort of metal loops that are supporting it in front of the striker. So it's not, it's not although it looks very, very practical and realistic, it's not something that would work in real life. It's going to have probably just enough support to blow up and frag your face with bits of brass. The bullet will go downrange for a short distance. But the fun of a sort of physics sandbox like this, especially in VR, is of course you can experiment with different ways of using things. And uh, <laughs> we can see the, the gun smacked on the desk to fire it, which would of course function. Uh, you would definitely be able to initiate the round that way but uh, even more problematic in terms of the case exploding and then the bullet probably still coming out with some amount of force in the rough direction of your head, so. Or it's towards somebody else, not not recommended. But, uh, you know, on the plus side, it has a Picatinny rail, so you can accessorize it with all sorts of nonsense. Uh. Are you telling me that the front ring of that uh, cartridge support is threaded for an oil filter suppressor? I mean, I'm curious to see how it works because there's gonna be a heck of a lot of noise behind the knot breach. Let's see. Yeah, that's, that's far too quiet. Uh, you, <laughs> no one's ever done this, so I can't say for sure, but there's going to be a lot of noise. So it's going to make a big old bang. It's not going to make a, any kind of suppressed effect. Uh, the sliding buttstock is a nice touch. I mean, maybe it'll prevent you from taking too much damage to the face. Can't help feeling I should have uh, a whiskey or something. Don't even drink whiskey, but uh, I think I need one for to see this one out. I just, I'm going to have to comment on the um, the optical site with the, the <laughs> YOLO reticle. <laughs> Highly appropriate for this insane design. This is technically plausible, but ill-advised, I think it's safe to say. The colour scheme is uh, offensive. I'm trying to maintain my composure slightly. I think case ejection would be problematic because there's going to be a fair bit of friction from the expanded case in the chamber, and there doesn't, doesn't appear to be an extractor. There's going to be a fair bit of, uh, I suppose you'd call it, stiction inside the chamber there. Uh, least of the problems with this gun. That is hilarious. I'm looking at this thing naively thinking that it's uh, just one of these exotic skeletonized race guns with anodyne like on the face of it this thing is this is a gun you could build in terms of how it looks but i should have realized it pivots open and it takes another enormous cartridge in this case it's a 20 millimeter cannon shell and i don't think i need to tell you to tell you that it would be problematic to design a, a, a rifle of these proportions the main reason i'm still laughing is that it just atomizes the target when it hits it <laughs>
which isn't at all realistic. Uh, it would just create a 20 millimeter size hole in the paper, carry on downrange, defeat the target backstop, uh, and hit someone in the car park beyond or what happens to be behind. Hopefully the range is underground in this virtual environment. Uh, and then the thing that really broke me, I think, was the sight, which is like something you'd see on a Nerf gun with physical crosshairs inside it and no magnification. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> I, think I, I think this one's broken me. This thing is insane. <laughs> so, I am familiar with a series of YouTube videos. The uh, guy behind the camera does sort of manual of arms or, or drills, as it were, with household items. Um, I've seen a couple of those, and they are they are good fun. This is this is based on that. Still laughing at the silly noises it makes when you press the buttons. Obviously, it's a child's toy that's been uh, combined with <laughs> with a sort of a shotgun. I guess what it's depicting is a sort of segmented tube magazine and then the gun is somehow loading each one of those in turn like a normal tube fed shotgun is. I'm sure an engineer could make it work in some way, but whether it looked quite like this, I don't know. <laughs> I'm running out of steam on this thing. It's it's truly insane, but congratulations to all concerned. <laughs> and yeah, there we go. <laughs> So I actually don't um, <laughs> don't know which is funnier. I've got to hand it to the uh, vocalizations <laughs> for the button presses that are, I think, slightly funnier than the than the original. What's, what's broken me this time is seeing this thing. I, I like <laughs> thinking of how real world physics would work, and thinking, oh, what's well, a game? You you put this very very long gun down on a narrow bench. Uh, in reality, it would tip off the front, but obviously it won't do that. And then of course it does do that because this game has physics. This thing's completely nuts. Caster Troy style, gold plated 1911. Only it's automatic. Has an insanely long slide and barrel presumably as i'm sure a lot of you know this would not function because the the mass of the slide is too great uh, it would stop it opening up it would the, the round would fire of course but it would not cycle it probably wouldn't even open what what you what you've sort of done there is create a blowback locked recoil operate recoil not operated firearm <laughs> who knows uh, it'd make a very good club uh, possibly golf Another absolutely insane gun. It, it's a pretty faithful, well, probably entirely faithful. I think it, if it looks at all wrong, it's just because it's enormous. <laughs> of the infamous Calibri, which for scale purposes is this big. Right, no bigger than my palm. Um, well, smaller than my palm significantly, actually. A, a completely pointless meme gun from, from long ago. You, I'm sure you know. All about this, Battlefield 1 put it in the game famously. Andrew, if you're watching this, hello. <laughs> so what they've done, they've scaled it up by a factor of, I'm not quite sure, uh, and turned the rounds into grenade rounds of some kind. Instead of the trigger, we have a whole 1911 pistol with some sort of weird barrel shroud rail system on it that's just fitted here to operate as a trigger. And of course, in reality, this is basically solid steel, or yeah, the various components of it are solid steel, perfectly operable despite being very small and fiddly and basically less than lethal. Scaled up to that size, it would have to be on a wheeled carriage to operate and you'd need some kind of a crank system to draw back the, the slide. Again, don't need me to tell you, this is completely bonkers. In a way, it's no less practical than this for actual fighting purposes.
Well, what a touching tribute to St. John of Browning this is with the Stars and Stripes barrel and receiver. It's an M2 made made portable. Uh, I've no doubt Dwayne Johnson could, uh, could actually carry and use this to some extent. <laughs> Not super practical, but compared to the, everything else I've seen today, this is basically a, a, a working firearm. What can I say? It's, it's, it's one of the most American guns I've ever seen. And uh, if you're ever going <laughs> to use a gun as a bludgeon, I mean, that, that clearly did, did the job to that poor Frankfurter. I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> that's, that's the worst thing I've seen today. The only the comparison that comes to mind is the scene in Mars Attacks where the character, where Sarah Jessica Parker has her head attached to the body of a dog and vice versa. That's what this feels like. <laughs> this, is, this is more disturbing than that to me. The Glock slide on the Luger is just depressing. <laughs> the Luger's barrel assembly and part of the frame that's on the Glock frame is just horrible because of the, the sort of horrible negative space between the barrel and the and the frame of the Glock. It's, oh, it makes me almost physically sick. You, it, this is bad and you should feel bad. Right, well, time to welcome a new member of the Emotional Support Weapon series, uh, family to the to the series. Um, here's a proper Sten Mark II. It's, it's a submachine gun only a designer could love. Very important historical design and massively underrated in my view. What we have on the screen here is a 7.62 rifle cartridge, machine gun cartridge, I guess scaled up version of it um, so we, there's a two-part buttstock to i guess to try and mitigate recoil with some sort of buffering uh which you'd need i mean they often people often say about uh, straight blowback designs which operate from this position this appears to just be scaled up so would it work uh, it wouldn't work well i think it's safe to say uh, ignoring the picatinny rail on the front that's just insult to injury and <laughs> the magazine is somewhat interesting in that it's Basically just a, a massive 30 caliber Sten box mag that's been looped over into a semi snail drum configuration. Uh, could you make that work and push a stack a column of cartridges around that smaller a loop as a double stack? Probably not, not without some feed problems. I don't know. I wouldn't like to try it and I don't recommend it. <sighs> right, those were the guns of, I guess, April Fool's Day. A somewhat traumatic experience <laughs> i hope you enjoyed it uh, it's only made me laugh before it made me despair so um as always check out the royal armory's youtube channel uh, and facebook or twitter and instagram um, come and visit us here at the museum in leeds or the one down on the south coast at fort nelson or at the tower of london we have stuff at all three sites um i will go away and recover and we'll see you again next time